let's try a video then. Hey, what do we reckon on that one? I reckon it was pretty good, personally. Um, we drove the car, we did a few things. We got some extra bits, charge cooler wires sorted out. Um, messed around with a tiny little fan under there. It's quite a successful video, that one. Got quite a lot done. Anyway, moving on to tonight's video. Turbo, open header. What is not to love about an open headed turbo car? It makes lots of good spooly noises. It makes lots of noise. Lots of fire comes out of here. However, as you have seen, the neighbors get a little bit upset about it, understandably. Also, although technically in this car, that still does pass an MOT in, re in regards to emissions, etc. Noise is probably a little bit questionable. The fact that this exits where it does exit and the fact that there is vents here, which will suck air in and there's that big hole there, although we will be covering that up, means it's not going to pass because there's the potential for, for the exhaust fumes to travel into the cabin and kill me, which we've all almost you know, I've mentioned it a few times on the channel before. That's nearly happened before. And I'm not, I don't, it's not likely when I say that. It genuinely did nearly happen. I was quite ill for quite a few days. Um, but yeah, brushing over that. That's where we're at. So, we love a turbo open-headed car. We can't have a turbo open-headed car all of the time. Now, I'm not saying that this little piece of action here isn't going to see the racetrack, or it's not going to see, it's definitely going to see Santa Pod. It's definitely going to see the dyno. Might see the odd racetrack, although that will be, well, almost certainly, I've not tested it, but almost certainly will be over the decibel limit for most racetracks. Um, so what we're going to do about that? What we're going to do about that is we are going to build a full exhaust for the car. Uh, it's an exhaust that means we can drive it reasonably on the road without too much noise. It will meet track limits on you know, on track, although it will hold back the power a little bit. Um, it will also pass an MOT, etc, etc. So, stop waffling. There's a box of lots and lots of exhaust bits. Um, I've got one silencer it's a very big long silencer because gents we all know length matters so yeah nice long exhaust center box there um and i've got a offset no i haven't it's down there and i've got an offset center box down there in this box over here i have got three lengths of two and a half inch pipe which Yes, that's half inch too small. The turbo outlet is three inch, and ideally I would run a three inch box all the way back. But I need to get that down there, down there, round the back of there, and out of there. At three inches, that doesn't leave us a lot of room. So by sacrificing half an inch on the diameter, we gain an awful lot more room, an awful lot more flexibility. It also means that the pipe is not up tight against things because it's going to get hot and I don't really want hot stuff next to stuff that shouldn't be getting hot. So by sacrificing half an inch, that kind of solves most of those problems. So I've got three lengths of that, which is gives us a little bit to spare, basically. Um, I've got some elbows. I've got some 45s. And although I've got enough pipe to make my own pie cuts, the exhaust shop um, sells laser cut pie cut pieces as you can see, for like, I think they were like four quid, like all in for the four bits, like a pound each or whatever. So seeing as I was buying stuff anyway, I thought I might as well get four very nice laser cut pie cut pieces. Um, and then if I need to make any more, I can make some more, but I've got four to start with anyway. So yeah, two elbows, two 45s, couple of pie cut pieces, two V-bands, one three inch, obviously it's come off the turbo housing, one two and a half inch, Yep, two and a half inch. I panicked there, I thought I looked a bit small, but that is a two and a half inch. Um, the plan is to come off the turbo on a V-band down pipe, and then have a V-band at the bottom of the down pipe, and then the exhaust around the back. So that's why we've got two of those. And of course, we have got a three inch V-band, and we need to get down to two and a half. So I've got a cone reducer, which is actually really quite a nice little fitting. Fits in there, real nice. Just straight off the V-band, straight down to two and a half inch. Should still flow quite well. Uh, and of course, a flexi coupler, because 
Although, to be honest, it probably doesn't need the flexi given how solidly mounted the engine is. A little bit of give is never a bad thing. So I've now waffled on for a full five minutes and 12 seconds. So what I'm gonna do is shut up, put up, get the car up, get the welder out, start tucking some bits together. And um, once I've got it kind of tacked together down there, I'll catch up with you guys and see where we're at. Actually, it's not that bad. It's getting there. So, so far, it's taken me quite a while to get my head round how I'm kind of doing it, but we've got V-band, reducer cone, pie cut, which is coming really handy, quite, quite a time saver. Uh, straight piece of pipe down to there, uh, which has got a little bit of an angle on here, just to try and make that. I think it was about six degrees I needed to make up. So just trim that edge a little bit. That goes down to there, which then goes to Z45, which is gonna go straight down. Um, and then when that gets to the bottom of there, we are gonna whack one of these puppies on there. So I am going to, that's all kind of tacked up as good as it needs to be. I'm gonna jack the car up so I can slide underneath, see where this is gonna get permission, per, permissioned, positioned, um, and then make up a pipe to go between the two. And then, and then what we're gonna have to do is work out if I can remove this down pipe all in one piece because it needs to be removed all in one piece without removing the turbo and all the other poncy stuff around it. I'm kind of thinking it should come down, like down and out quite nicely, but we'll see. So um, yeah, right, car jacked up. See you in a minute. Underneath. Okay, car is jacked up. Jacked, jacked, car is jacked. Car is jacked up, right. I've also, I remember my lights tonight. Well, I've actually had the lights down here since the wheels video, if I want it with you, but that does mean that when I scoot under here with you all tonight, you'll actually be able to see what's going on rather than some just dark, horrible mess. And there he is. So the idea is, exhaust is obviously going down the tunnel that way somewhere. So we need to put a piece of pipe on there that's gonna come down to roughly there, I guess. Um, I probably should um, offer the exhaust box up ahead of time so that I know where I'm meant to be connecting this to. So, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We are gonna, I'm gonna put a piece of pipe on there that sticks out really long, just with a very weak tack on it, um, so that I can work out what's what. But excuse the two cables that are going underneath the exhaust, because they are gonna be rerouted. That is the engine ground and the power 
to the starter, I believe. The power to something. I can't exactly remember what is what now off the top of my head. Um, I think one's battery ground, one's chassis ground, actually, if I'm honest. But um, they obviously are going to be removed and repositioned elsewhere where it's not going to clash and get melted by the exhaust. So that actually gives us quite a bit of room. The only thing that's in kind of firing range is the starter motor, which, oh, see that's got a very weak tackle, I just moved it, uh, which we might make some sort of heat shield up. I and mean, this is all obviously going to be heat wrapped anyway. So we'll see where we go with that. Fingers crossed we don't cook any starters. It is only a standard ZTEC starter anyway. So if we do, it's not exactly extortionate to explain. Ex can't talk tonight, replace. Um, it's not like we got a wasp starter or something in there that's like three, four hundred quid. That was like 20 quid from the scrapyard. So we are all good to go. Right, I'm going to pop a bit of pipe on that. Then we're going to offer up a box over there. And realistically, this is when I need a like a proper ramp, really, because I've got the car jacked quite the way up. Well, as far as I can jack it up on the front, of course, put the jack a bit further under and lift it a bit more, give myself a bit more room. Might do that. That might be a good idea. Right. Scoot out. If I put you there like that and position that like that, ready for cool cinematic exit shot, exit shot, or oh, I'm just gonna hit my head on something. Either way, goodbye. Massive trombo. <laughs> Quite good, isn't it? Anyway, right, oh look. 6% left on the battery, right. That's mocked up, so I can put that in so that I can offer up. Uh, no, that's a straight piece of bar. Where's my bendy twisty bit of bar? I've lost my bendy twisty bit of bar. Oh, I spent ages making that, and now I've lost it. Hang on, give me a second. See if I can find it before the GoPro battery runs out. Don't know where that's gone. Anyway, right, so I've made that up. We've got bend on the end, V-band, flexi, silencer, all welded together. So that's gonna go under the car like that. Um, and I've made that up so that I know where this is, so that I know where the box is gonna sit, so I know where to weld on that piece of bendy bar, which is gonna be my exhaust hanger support. Um, on the back end, and I'm probably going to make one for the front end as well, hanging this box from both ends um, for a bit of extra support. Yeah, it's going well. Right, I'm down to 4% on the battery, so let me swap the batteries over and I'll see you in a minute under the car. Okay, right, got a little bit ahead of myself. Um, I decided that I'd get a lot of the fiddly stuff out of the way before I changed the battery in the GoPro and got back to you guys so that I could actually show you something rather than just time lapses of nothing happening. 
a um, lot of angles, etc., etc. Take this off my head um, to get done. But we have got a turbo downpipe now. Um, obviously, three inch V band on that end. That end goes to the doodah down there. So it sits in the car, something like that, coming off the turbo down and out. Um, now, as I said earlier, we've now got to work out if I can A, slide it down from the top like that, or B, go from underneath there up. So I'm going to try from the top down to start with because, well, you know, we all like it from the top down, don't we? Whoops. Right, hang on. Let me get the camera in the right place. Right. See what happens. So if that ends out, that's still hot from where I welded it. So what I'm thinking is if I poke it down there like that, I might be able to twist it. Oh, look at that. Do you know what? It's funny because someone once said to me, you should become a exhaust fabricator. You're really good at it. Well, if I'm completely honest with you, that's a hell of a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So it does slide in from the top, which is fine. Happy days, loads of room. Um, and then let's show you underneath whilst we're here. So let's go. Oh, turn my trolley round. On the trolley. Here we go. Okay, and that then was down there like that and ends up right there like that. Ow. Ow. Right. From there. Like that. Anyway, the rest of the box is over there. Those mounts there are where the gearbox linkage used to bolt up. And seeing as they're already in there as clenched studs, I thought I would try and utilize those as a bracket for the center box. So that's what I'm going to look at next. Um, that's all fine. That's all good. Lovely jubbly. I haven't got enough gas or wire at the moment to fully weld everything. So I don't want to start welding complete joins yet. I'm just going to focus on getting this all in, see if we can't get all the way to the back and get the whole system tacked together. Um, and then when I come back down here on Monday and Wednesday night this week, I'll just sit basically weld for eight hours straight and get the whole thing welded up. But so far, so good. Right, I am going to... I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to think about it, and then I'll see you guys in a second. Boys, girls, ladies, gentlemen, and people called Frank. Well, Frank might be watching. <laughs> um, right, we have made a bit of progress, and I've just kind of cracked on with it and got some bits done because it's getting on, it's getting late. Um, I didn't want to be cutting and shutting too much with the angle grind up too late into that. I mean, I've got the garage door shut, but still a little bit loud, isn't it, really? So this is what we've got from back here. Obviously, we're down the back back end of the car now. Um, let me angle that light away so that you can see but don't get the glare. Um, We've got our back box up there, side exit exhaust, as uh, as we previously had. Um, this is a slightly better box that we've got in there this time, though it actually fits in nicely rather than where it was before. Uh, nice little bend down onto a 45, that's all, you know, fitted up quite nice, straight into our centre section, which is over there. Um, whilst we're here, a bit of a story. You see this here, this big dent in the underside of the car. Well, originally there was a big back box here or centre box here and we were leaving the pub car park one evening me and Dean and um, well, it's fine when we drove in the car park but when we drove out the car park we went over a speed bump and apparently the car didn't have enough clearance to get over the speed bump which resulted in the back box hitting the speed bump the speed bump shoved the back box straight backwards and uh, put this big dent in the car which uh, coincidentally threw me and Dean in like basically through the windscreen at the same time as you can imagine but there you go Fun and games, eh? Won't have that problem this time because it all fits up real nice. Um, I just need to tack in this joint here because that's not tacked yet. Um, and once I've done that, I can lower the whole car down and see what it looks like level-wise because I, I think it's fairly level. But obviously with the car jacked up on this angle, it's difficult to tell how level it is. But you can see like it doesn't drop, sit down below anything. It's really nice and tucked up there. So plenty of ground clearance given that the car is really quite low um, but yeah I'm gonna get that corner there that bit all tacked up drop the car down we'll see what it looks like and then I will probably drop the front pipe the turbo down pipe off and start welding that because it's it's getting late so I don't want to be cutting too much and 
pissing around. I've got to work out how I'm going to suspend the rest of this um, later on as well. But I, I want to buy a few more bits of tube and whatnot to be able to actually make those mounts up properly. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. And I'll see you guys in a second. annoying that isn't it that's old bessie over here look the old laptop thought i'd try and fire it up today to see if i could just you know at least get it warmed up and have a quick plug in so far i don't want to play ball anyway you have just seen a montage time lapse of a mammoth welding session that we had the other night got the exhaust fully welded i also managed to i don't know how well you could guys be able to see it but severely burn my hand there so there's two two lines there almost probably about 60 seconds after i just run a really nice bead i went and touched it with my bare hand because you know that's exactly what you should be doing after you've uh well did you exhaust anyway stop yapping down to business exhaust is welded and it's all in down pipe is all wrapped up nicely that shoots off down there really nicely just put my hand in front of that light so you get rid of the glare shoots off down there really nicely what I did manage to do though, not only did I manage to fuck it up once, but I managed to fuck it up twice, was these brackets that I made to try and, um, that's really annoying. Sorry about that, it'll stop in a minute. Um, was these brackets that I made, I managed to ruin them, so I cut them off and I started doing them again, and then I ruined them again, and then I cut them off a third time and realized, I ain't gonna work that way. I was probably trying to overcomplicate it, so, I did what any good car enthusiast would do. I went to, went to Halfords, look. It's becoming a recurring theme on this channel at the moment, going to Halfords. Anyway, I went to Halfords and for £3.20, I got these very cheap, universal, hang on my jobby jiggy beaks. I got two of those, one for the front, one for the back. So, quite simply, I'm gonna quickly whack them in. Once they're in, we can start the car up, see how it sounds, whoops. Now, obviously I could start the car up and see how it sounds now, but then of course the exhaust would be hot when I try and put those on. So I'm gonna put those on first while the exhaust is cold. Hopefully by that time, that thing over there has stopped making that horrendous noise. And we're gonna start the car up, see how she sounds. Right, okay. Just amended the track in whilst I had it up in the air, but we have got a little bracket on down here now, mounted up there. And uh, I just basically bent this up a little bit. I did make a little 
bracket it up, well, cut a little bit out and welded some bracing in because obviously that's going to flex around like there's no tomorrow if it didn't. So, welded that little bit up. I still got to do the one at the back, um, but that one's not so difficult to do. That's quite an easy one. So, what we're going to do now is drop the car down, start her up, see what she sounds like, and um, yeah, go from there. Right, exciting stuff. Let's put the car down, turn the key. Right, okay, situation update, exhaust is now fully on. This thing stopped fucking beeping like buggery and is actually alive and working now. Um, so we'll be able to have some sort of look at it. I don't think I'll be able to data log because I think as soon as I unplug it, it will just die. But start her up, see what she sounds like now, I guess. See if this, all this money we spent on the exhaust is worth it or if it just sounds like shit. I might open this door a little bit as well. Right, away we go. You ready? Everything's all set up, innit? We've got oil, we've got coolant, we've got... I'll just send it, see what happens. Send it. Right, away we go. Ready? <laughs> Wastegate because the wastegate's holding open. Uh, Brutal. Let me have a look and see. Uh, what do I need for that? 13, isn't it? Right, so situation update I've lost the fire ring, it's gone. <laughs> we've, we've even started tidying up the garage and we can't find it. So, what I've done, and it's a bit moody, well, yeah, <laughs> got a bit of schedule 40, no, schedule 10 pipe, basically made another one. It's a bit it's a bit rough, a bit ready, but it seems to do the job. It'll be good enough for the time being, and I'll just have to ring the guy up that I got the wastegate from and ask him to send me out a new firing. I have a feeling I might have thrown it away whilst I was tidying some stuff up, but there you go. So, right, I'm going to get this bolted up. Where's the other bit of the... I've lost the down pipe now. Whoa. <laughs> Not ideal. Right, so get that bolted back up. We'll get that bolted back up, and then uh, we'll start her up and see how she goes. Right, our little Schedule 10 firing is in. It's not perfect, but it will be better than nothing. It still might flow a little bit out the wastegate, um, but we'll see. Let's give it a go, shall we? In theory, it shouldn't be that now anymore. inside as a fire ring see if that'll work I'm not sure 100% sure it's gonna work brilliantly but I've also put the also put tighten the bolts up on the um, turbo flange as well which will loose because that's blowing from there hopefully might be something like Let's see
start going from somewhere else as well. Is out of action. I've got like no, I've got no gears on the back half of the shifter. So I don't know if one of the shifter cables came off or something. Um, yeah, right. Right, here we go, ladies and gents. Uh, the problem with reverse was the fact that I actually hadn't done a bolt up on the linkage or it come loose. So I've done that up. Uh, now kind of sorted the exhaust best we can. I'm gonna give it a little drive. And uh, see what happens. Thankfully I've got Sam here tonight to come rescue me if it breaks down.
Right, well, that was another, another little eventful scud up and down the road. I went a little bit further down the hill and round again today because obviously I had Sammy to come rescue me if, if all went wrong. Um, it's fine cruising on and off the throttle, absolutely fine. As soon as you try and get in it, it just goes 10.0 on the, on the uh, AFR and just bogs right down. So it's just dumping fuel, which means it can't go. Um, we have got what looks like, I don't know what that is. It looks That looks a little bit like aluminium. That's quite worrying. It looks like aluminium shavings there. I don't know where they would have come from though. She uh, she got nice and roasty toasty. I mean, the exhaust is red hot. The, uh, the um, doodah, thermostat's only showing 52 degrees, which, cool. Looks a bit ropey in there, doesn't it? Not that warm though, it's probably about right. I uh, didn't see if it made any boost. I don't know, I'll have to watch the footage back in a minute and see if it got into boost, but I doubt it, because as soon as I, well, as soon as I put my foot on the throttle, it bogged right down. Um, I think the exhaust sounded all right. I mean, obviously I was in the car, so it's so loud, but sound got some footage, sounded all right. Did nearly die coming back down the hill because I had like no brakes on the pedal. So I quickly grabbed the handbrake, which is what it's for, but obviously that locked the back wheels up. So there's a little bit of skiddage. There's probably a couple of number 11s out there coming down the hill. Um, but yeah, exhaust is all in. It's leaking from this V-band. It's leaking from the V-band down the bottom a little bit which is slightly frustrating because I paid extra money for like decent E-bands. Then they're not eBay E-bands. They're not eBay V-bands. They were like half decent V-bands from Profusion. So they should have been all right. Obviously the, uh, the wastegate is still bleeding a little bit of, a little bit of air out. Um, because that's, you know, that's what it does. Um, that is going to be it for tonight though, driving wise, because we did just get bollocking for the noise again for a second time in like three weeks. Um, and obviously the map needs an awful lot of work. It needs an awful lot of work. The steering is still really snatchy, uh, but I think that's because the camber caster and toe in, toe out is not set up. Like this one, I've got quite a negative camber on the top. This one still poking out quite positive. So it's like snatching the wheel. Um, but yeah, I think that's gonna wrap this video up to be honest with you guys. We've got the exhaust on. Um, obviously I still need to put a little exhaust tip down there, put the, like the, the three inch outward roll, inward roll tip on it. Outward rolled, outward rolled, I think it is. Doesn't really matter. I'm rambling because I'm nervous as fuck because we just drove the car and it's like, <sighs> but um, yeah, she runs, she drives, she felt quite solid to be honest. She felt nice to drive. Obviously, the map is completely out, so it wouldn't, it didn't like go when you put your foot down or whatever. And despite the fact that it's got, seemed to have like no brakes on the front, it like didn't want to stop, but that might just need bleeding and bias set up, etc. The backs work really well. As soon as I grabbed that handbrake, the back wheel started to lock up. Um, really well so i know the backs are good i think the fronts probably just need bleeding a little bit because the pedal's probably a bit soft um apart from that all went really well right gonna end it off there like comment subscribe and on the next video i might try and come down here on a saturday or a sunday in the day in the daylight and maybe try and get the laptop if it will survive um try and get the laptop in the car to do a data log whilst we drive it up and down the hill because then obviously that will allow us to amend some data and whatnot and see what's happening and what's not. But yeah, there you go. Right, until next time guys, thanks for watching.